Stewart, your typical average everyday kid, except for one thing. I or ear. Ah yes, there it is all right, the molar in the back. You're probably saying, a tooth? What's the big deal about a tooth? And ordinarily, you would be correct, but that is no ordinary tooth. Uh-uh. This is Stuart's sweet tooth. One nagging, annoying, demanding, blah, blah, blah. Enough with the yakking. I need a candy bar. Nah, ow. Very loud, sweet tooth. Does it have that gooey stuff in the middle? Because it's got to have that gooey stuff in the middle. There, said Stuart, through a smeared kisser and a gulp. Satisfied? Ah, sweet. Yes, a tooth that wants what it wants, when it wants, and lets everybody know it. Take, for example, two years ago at Cousin Charlotte's wedding. Stuart was on his best behavior. His shoes were shined, bow tie straight, hands were spotless. Grandfather had just lifted his glass to toast the bride and groom when, I'm falling asleep here. Come on, move it along, Gramps. Cut the cake. Time to cut the cake. I want the end hung with all that I icing. I don't know him, uttered Mother through a gritted smile. He doesn't belong to me, said Dad under his breath. Who is that boy, muttered Grandmother. Stuart wiped the pink rose from his lips. It's the sweet tooth. It was not a pretty picture. The tooth was no better behaved at school. Stuart had enough detention slips to wallpaper his room. Why, just two weeks ago, who can tell me the capital of North Dakota? asked Mrs. Finnegan in geography class. Jelly beans, said a muffled voice from the back of the room. Did you say something, Stuart? asked Mrs. Finnegan. Licorice. Stuart, I'm afraid I can't hear your answer, said Mrs. Finnegan. Lollipops. You're going to have to speak up, Stuart. Hey, I'm dying here for a couple of chocolate peanut butter cups, okay? Detention slip number 432. But I'm telling you, it's not me, said Stuart, as he was led away to the principal's office. It's the tooth! The movies? You don't really want to go there, do you? Not with Stuart, anyway. Would somebody pass the yummy gummies already? Shh! Don't look at me, choked Stuart. It's the tooth. And of course, there was the unforgettable Easter basket mishap. Now that was really ugly. That Sunday AM, the family awoke to find jelly beans littering the living room. Marshmallow chicks were missing. The trail of crumbed yellow foil wrappers led to one person, and one person only. Oh, Stuart, cried a disappointed mother and dad. I can't look, whimpered his sister Allison, closing her eyes. Those chocolate bunnies never had a chance, moaned Stuart, rubbing his belly aching stomach. It was the tooth. Hey. Can we stop going down memory lane here and open up that bag of cookies? That's it. I've had enough, cried Stuart. Enough? I haven't even had one. No more cookies, shouted Stuart. No more candy, no more cake, no more nothing. That's no more anything, said the tooth. And who do you think you're kidding, kid? Bring on those chocolate chips. Stuart sighed. What choice did he have? He was a boy with one big sweet tooth. He tore open the bag. He grabbed one, then two, three, four cookies. He opened his mouth. Come to Papa, shouted the tooth. Stuart stopped. What are you waiting for, kid? Come on. Cookie, 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 cookie. Stuart dropped the cookies, but not in his mouth. It's over, tooth, said a suddenly determined Stuart. I'm cutting you off, starting right now. It's cold turkey. Cold turkey? Yuck! I hate cold turkey. Unless you add a little cranberry sauce. Didn't you hear me, Tooth? Cried Stuart. I said it's over. From now on, 
There's nothing for you but a, 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 Stuart gulped. Healthy diet. Healthy? Kid, say you don't mean it, wailed the tooth. But Stuart meant it all right. He meant every word. Yes, it was trying. Yes, it was difficult. Okay, it was darn near impossible, but Stuart stayed strong. For the tooth, it was a different story. Peas? You're giving me peas? Little dry green veggie marbles? Broccoli? You're feeding me a shrub? That's not going to do it. Dessert? Where's dessert? I'm begging you. When do we get the good stuff? I can't hear you, said Stuart, putting down his fork and placing his hands over his ears. Strong. He stayed strong. Just one incy teensy chocolate covered peanut before hitting the sack. How about it? A nosh? A nibble? A breath mint? Something? Forget it, said Stuart, turning off the light. Strong, strong. Come on, what do you say? One spoon full of sugar, urged the tooth as Stuart ate his cereal. Stuart shook his head. The tooth was losing its grip, and it knew it. A drop of chocolate milk, one measy little crumb bun crumb. No way, said Stuart, very strong. Hey, watch that toothbrush, shouted the tooth, and keep that tongue of yours on the other side of your mouth. Trying to wiggle me out of here, huh? Well, I'm not going, kid. I'm not going anywhere. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Stuart brushed, flossed, gargled. Ugh moaned the tooth, weakly. He's not hearing me. I'll get you for this, kid. Stuart smiled. He was winning. Oh yes, he was winning. Three days passed. The tooth was quiet. Very quiet. Almost too quiet. But Stuart wasn't thinking tooth. He was thinking baseball. It was the biggest game of the season. Bottom of the ninth. Stuart was at the plate. Runners were on second and third. Two outs, two strikes. The crowd was on their feet. The game was on the line. Stewart's team was down by one run. The pitcher went into his windup. There was a hush from the stands. A big, fat fastball was heading for the plate, and it was all up to Stewart. And then, boy, could I go for a hunk of bubble gum right now. Swish, swish. Hee, hee, hee. Strike three, yelled at the umpire. You're out. Gotcha, said the tooth. Now go get me some goodies. I'll get you some goodies, mumbled Stuart, dropping the bat. Home he marched, into the kitchen, straight for the refrigerator. He yanked open the door, rustled through the vegetable bin. He flung lettuce, he tossed tomatoes, he hurled a head of cauliflower, and then he pulled out a carrot. That's right, a carrot. It's over for you, Tooth, announced Stuart defiantly, lifting the carrot above his head. What are you going to do with that? asked his wide-eyed sister. Stuart grinned. He opened his mouth wide, very wide. Kid, no, not the carrot, not the carrot. Yes, the carrot, shouted Stuart. No, kid, no. Allison covered her eyes. Am I too young to be watching this? Closer, 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 and then crunch. Ah, ah so long, sweet world. What a way to go. Done in by an orange veggie. Stuart rubbed his jaw. He stared at the carrot and the tooth. It was over. What's going to happen to it? asked Allison as she followed her brother upstairs to the bedroom. Stuart placed the molar under his pillow, then looked at his sister. Who knows? he said with a big smile. That's the Tooth Fairy's problem now. Wah, 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 cried the baby teeth. Woof, yapped the canine. Please be quiet, said the wisdom tooth. I'm trying to read. Pipe down, wise guy. What does a sweet tooth have to do to get an ice cream sundae around here with hot fudge and throw some sprinkles on it while you're at it? The tooth fairy sighed. <sighs> Rotten teeth. The end.